1987, Night of the Champions, Gary Stridham's Pro Debut Victory. Evolution of Bodybuilding.net takes a trip back to the 1987 Night of the Champions. The Night of the Champions is one of bodybuilding's most historic events. The event lasted 26 years, from 1978 to 2004. After 2004, the event was renamed the New York Pro. The event winners went on to have very successful careers, many of them launching their pro careers at this event. In 1987, a young bodybuilder named Gary Stridham was looking to start his pro bodybuilding career. Gary earned his pro status by winning the overall title at the 1986 NPC National Championships. Gary had to defeat a very deep lineup of bodybuilders, which included Matt Mendenhall, who placed second, behind Gary Stridham in the men's heavyweight category. Gary would only focus on one event in 1987, and that would be the Night of the Champions. The 1987 Night of the Champions had an incredible lineup of bodybuilders. 24 of the world's best bodybuilders arrived in New York to compete at this prestigious event. Gary was the new guy on the scene, and the majority of veteran bodybuilders had no idea who this kid was. From the moment Gary stepped on stage, all eyes would be on him. Gary presented a fantastic physique that had the perfect balance of size and symmetry. It was not an easy task for the South African bodybuilder. Breathing down his neck were Mike Ashley, Ron Love, Robbie Robinson, Bertel Fox, and Steve Brisbois, to name a few. After an intense battle, Gary Stridham would emerge the winner, with Mike Ashley placing a close second and Ron Love had to settle for third. During his pro career, Gary would go on to win four IFBB pro events and was the WBF champion in 1991. Gary's best placing at the Mr. Olympia was fifth on his debut in 1988. First, Gary Stridham, second, Mike Ashley, third, Ron Love fourth, John Natashak fifth, Robbie Robinson sixth, Shane DeMora seventh, Bertel Fox eighth, David Hawk, 9th. Steve Brisbois, 10th. Tom Terwilliger, Roy Callender, Thierry Gunst, Larry Jackson, Sean Jenkins, Edward Kawak, Rod Kuntz, Ron Magnum, Ali Mala, Ken Passariello, Tony Pearson, Jocelyn Pelletier, Frank Richard, Wayne Robbins, Scott Wilson. We hope you enjoyed our bodybuilding history features. Stay tuned for more in the near future, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.
Fox from Britain will be posing for us shortly. Shane Damore, talk about rising stars in the sport. This guy is a, certainly a bodybuilder to keep your eyes on. At age 20, he already won three titles in 1986. The veteran, Ali Mala, this guy thinks he's the best and is really keyed up for the event tonight. Eduardo Kowak, we, one word really applied to Eduardo is potential. He came in eighth place last year, 13th in the 1986 Mr. Olympia, four times Mr. Europe, three times Mr. World. Ron Love, the Detroit police officer, six foot, 235 pounds, will be tough to beat tonight. He was second place last year. Also, the biggest bodybuilder in the competition tonight, out of Belgium, the Belgium national champion, Terry Guggs, comes in at 6'2", 270 pounds. Did I say big? How about the Texas Titan himself, Gary Stridham? Formerly lived in Houston, now living in Venice, California. He comes in at 6'2 and 250. He's 1986 national champion. And of course, the veteran from Canada, Roy Callender, as well as an up-and-comer from the Steel City. Pittsburgh gives us David Hawk out of the USA. And of course, Mr. Natural, Michael Ashley. Already the competition. hits the, uh, the lane or not, but that's what Fertile likes to do when he unwinds from working out. Next up, it's the man they call the killer, Dave Hawk, out of Pittsburgh, age 24. Dave is really catapulted right into the scene and, and is always tough to beat, but in the past two years, it's really been his two years, Bob. Yeah, since Dave won the, uh, the, the Mr. USA and, and then subsequently went on to win the World Games in London, he's really made a tremendous impact on the pro scene. Uh, Dave sports a, a, a fine, symmetrical physique. He's very balanced, uh, good-looking man, and uh, he, he's a real crowd pleaser, has a, a tremendously uh, built-up fan base and uh, has, has a great future in, in the professional ranks. When you follow a guy like Bertel Fox, who is so massive, and, and of course Dave looks fantastic, but he's not as big muscularly as Bertel, does that sometimes psych you out a little bit when you follow a big guy like Bertel? Well, I'm not sure, because it, there's basically so many different criteria here involved. The judges are not only looking for mass, but they're looking for the balance of the physique as well, and the presentation of the physique, and so, uh, and the definition, and you take all these factors in consideration and uh, it could possibly even out. It's really giving the crowd what they like though. How about his back as far as the back shot is always so important? Well Dave's got striations through the lower back which indicate a high level of muscularity and there you see the intercostal muscles alongside of the abdominal muscles and when he's squeezing down on himself there he's He's trying to show the striations throughout his upper body. And uh, it, it, his, his development and his muscularity seem to be really on today. He yeah, absolutely fantastic. It looks like he's just dieted just enough and he's just going to enjoy sucking up. The happy day Hawk leaves a very frenzied audience. Where they really support this. Sarah Guns will soon be taking the stage, but we had a chance to talk with Dave Hawk how he got started in bodybuilding. Well, basically, um, most young kids are into rock and roll music, and I'm still into it. I'm into all types of music. I played drums for 12 years. My hair actually used to be straight, went down to my shoulders, and 
You know, but see, the thing was, so that I could have my hair that way and the image that I wanted to be a drummer in a rock band, I had to have good grades because I'm family oriented. And my parents said, you know, you know if you're going to have this image and you're going to play the drums all the time and do these concerts and things, you have to, you know, do well in school. So I did uh, that and more or less I played the drums for uh, 12 years and then I lost 70% of my hearing. So, and I went to an ear specialist and they said, you know, you have to give up the drums for a while because you're just going to lose your hearing completely if you keep up the heavy pounding. Because I used to play 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And the thing was, was um, then I was into my weight training at the same time. So what happened was I actually uh, moved off into the weight training, cleaned up my image, have a, you know, apple pie kind of guy image. <laughs> The Belgium national champion, Terry Gunst. We talk about Big Bob. This is the biggest bodybuilder in New York City tonight. 6'3", 270. He is massive, making his pro debut. Yeah, this is his pro debut. Uh, he's uh, definitely one of the more massive bodybuilders that I've seen. Uh, needs to work some on his refinement, but uh, has a tremendous amount of muscle mass. When you make your pro debut, what things go through your head? Here's a man who dominated, obviously, over in Belgium and some European circles, but here's a guy who is coming over here with the best of the best. It's one of those uh, uh, big fish in a little pond and, a, and then turning into, uh, you know, c coming into the, the biggest pond in, as far as competitive bodybuilding is concerned. So the mass is there. A quick critique of, of Terry Gunst, if you could, if you were a judge. Right uh, he's a huge man, that's for sure. Um, I would be trying to look for a little more sharpness in his physique and a little more refinement. And we'll come back with more of the ninth annual Night of Champions from New York City after this. We're back at the ninth annual Night of Champions in New York City. The competition continues. We're going to take a look backstage at some of the psyche procedures, the pumping up procedures for some of the competitors. We look at a man, a, a local favorite by the name of John Natashak, a man who's come back from a vertebrae operation to come back all the way as we see him getting ready for his competition. Already on stage, Ron Love, 6'3", 240, the police officer from Motown. Ron Love, of course, teaches self-defense tactics in the Motor City. A police officer, a guy, I guess, you don't want to mess around with late at night. Ron Love, of course, came in second in his pro debut right here last year at the Night of Champions. A man massively built and has a lot of potential. The guy who's just taken it seriously the past about eight or ten years, but he looks like he's a pretty serious tonight. Bob. Ron's got an incredible rack of shoulders on him, and his upper body is really muscular. Um, basically, the, the improvements that I see that he could, he could certainly use in his physique are to flex his legs when he's on stage, and uh, he's an extremely popular athlete. of champions in New York City. Another police officer. We don't know what it is with police officers getting the body ready, but it's certainly a good sign. John Natashak, a man, a local favorite, a New Jersey police officer. A great comeback. John, uh, Bob, you can tell us about that because here's a guy who had a severe car accident. He's coming back all the way. Well, he was told by his doctors, uh, which is typical of a, of a severe spinal injury, that he would basically never exercise again. And he, he successfully proved them wrong. I mean, there's, there's uh, a lot of... Uh, fortitude in, in that, and here he is back on stage. We mentioned the 1,500 fans here in the crowd, and of course, they're so close, and the fact that a lot of these people in the stands train with guys like John and Ron because they're local guys. Well, what you'll notice is that a lot of the, the local men will have uh, fa followings of all their own, entire blocks and sections in the audience that, that'll be kind of rooting sections in addition to having their normal uh, their normal fans. The music, as we take a look. John Addison talking about being a police officer. Well, I'm, the, <laughs> I'm one of the biggest guys that on the job, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm not a, a big guy, actually. You know, um, I appear large on stage, but in clothes, I don't look that big. Um, it's, it's good to stay in shape, you know, yeah. so 
Just mentally and physically, the whole bit. I mean, it all works hand in hand with the police department. We're taking a look now at Ali Mala, and here's a guy. If you could please, Bob, fill us in on his, you should say, ethnic background, because it's certainly a lot more interesting than your average bodybuilder. Well, Ali's from, uh, is, is Kurdish, and from a nomadic, uh, the Kurds are nomadic tribes in, in Lebanon and Iran and Iraq, um, and he trains presently at World Gym as a massive physique. You also mentioned the fact that you have to be confident to be a bodybuilder, but this man just exudes confidence. He lives, eats, and sleeps bodybuilding, and he thinks he's the best. Yeah, he, he knows in his mind that he's the best bodybuilder. Bob, I asked you if you had to pick out a few negative aspects of Ollie, what would, what would one or two be? Uh, what Ollie needs to work on with his physique is not the muscular mass. It's getting the muscles to flow together more properly. And uh, in, in his genetic structure, the, uh, the, the V taper looking from the front, he has a tremendously thick back, has great legs, great arms, and great body parts. Now he needs to, to put the work into making the body parts flow. We're going to come back with a couple of the smaller guys in tonight's competition, Shane Demora, Steve Briswell, and Tom Terwilliger. We'll take a time out, come back with more of the United Champions on ESPN after this. the ninth annual night of champions from new york city humalay alongside bob paris and you know in the first couple of contestants we just viewed earlier tonight we saw some of the bigger guys in the world of bodybuilding but tonight or right now we're going to take a look at maybe some of the smaller guys some big little guys if you will bob but certainly they shouldn't be underestimated by any means shane demora a real up and coming yeah shane uh don't let his heights deceive you because he packs an incredible amount of quality muscle uh, symmetrical muscle on his uh, genetically gifted frame a young man 20 years old I had the opportunity to go down to st. Petersburg Florida and uh, speak with him and his family and talk about his uh, dieting his training and his philosophies on the sport of bodybuilding when Shane Demora first picked up a set of weights he never would have dreamed what could happen to his five foot three inch frame I started when I was 13 just to you know acquire some size I was a very short guy and I figured you know, uh, being short, you know, um, you know, if I'm going to be short, I'm, I'm going to be a big short guy. So I, you know, I started working out, and uh, I walked into a gym, and you know, I progressed very fast. Today, this young champion has already set a precedent in the sport, and is now pursuing additional goals. I'm the youngest professional in the history of the sport. I turned pro at 19 years old, and I used to joke when I was 16 that I was going to do this, and here it happened. And um, so I, I know the potential that I have, and that's why I keep going, because I know I could be the best at this sport. But to be the best takes a lot of hard work, and Shane knows exactly what to do, especially in the gym. There's a difference between a workout and an intense workout. A workout is just going through the motions at 60, 70 percent, um, going the same place as you did your last workout. An intense workout is pushing it to the limit to a positive fatigue, um, each workout and seeing gains. Along with his training, Shane credits much of his success to his dieting practices. I stick to a very basic diet. It's 60% to 65% complex carbohydrates, 30% protein, and 5% is fat, and sometimes less. Sometimes I'm around 4%, 3% fat. <laughs> but you won't find much fat on this body, especially when contest time rolls around. My diet usually ranges anywhere between eight to 10 weeks before a contest. I try to keep my body weight around 15 to 20 pounds away from contest weight. Diet and training are essential to a bodybuilder, but Shane also weighs importance on his mental preparation and attitude. And with the great mental awareness that he possesses, not to mention his physique, Shane Demora is bound to have a great professional bodybuilding career. And there he is, the 20-year-old sensation, Shane Demora. And it used to be, you didn't get serious about bodybuilding, at least at this level, until maybe 23, 24. This man has set new standards for teenagers. He, he won the, uh, not only the teenage, but the junior and the overall, uh, his class in the national uh, in the last year has really come on strong in the pros now. At 5'3", 172 pounds, this man looks so much bigger. And I guess that's because, as you mentioned, his great genetics, but his 
as well as his overall bodybuilding and his training is really, his body is such a beautiful flow, and I know you're a great fan of symmetry, and this man certainly has a lot of it. Well, bodybuilding is all about illusion. It's the illusion that you strike on stage that matters. And right now, very happy Shane Demore, a man who certainly, in years to come, will be a man to watch, and right now, he is the guy to watch. 5'3", 170 pounds, as you mentioned, down in St. Petersburg. He's the guy who said, you can fool yourself in the gym, but you can't fool the judges come competition time, and he's not fooling anyone, and he looks fantastic. Shane Demora leaves the stage to the yells of 1,500 fans in the Big Apple. Another guy, I guess you'd say, kind of small bomb, P.C. Griswold, Canada, 5'3", a little lighter than Shane, about 160, 162, but he has a lot going from as far as symmetry, and he, he looks fantastic. As you said, the illusion, he looks bigger than he is. Exactly. Um, Steve is the, the lightweight world champion from last year, and uh, has a tremendous, nice, symmetrical physique. It doesn't come sometimes that some of these shorter guys get too muscular and they maybe look kind of blocky and they have to really guard against everything. Well, any bodybuilder has to develop their physique in regards to their height and their genetic frame as well. Out of Canada, Steve Brisbois. Following Shane Demora, those guys can look themselves actually each other in the eye back in the uh, backstage as he gives a big smile to the 1,500 fans on hand. As we said, a very vocal crowd, a knowledgeable crowd here mm -hmm. in the Big Apple Box. Yeah, they know they know what they want, and they certainly cheer for it. And they're getting it tonight. Some great competition. The music's so important for any bodybuilder. As far as your selection, what do you lean toward as far as when you pose? I lean toward a, a, a modern classic and uh, usually present a very flowing type of pose routine. A lot of people like a harder rock or, or a, a beat that's going to get the audience more involved and more upbeat. Postmaster, next up, Tom Forliger, of course, a local favorite as well. He pretty much runs onto the stage. The crowd loves this guy. He looks big, a little bigger than the last two guys. Tell us about Tom. Here's a guy that uh, looks extremely hard and big. Any way you could critique him for the judge if you were sitting in front. Tom has a nice symmetrical physique. He's uh, this this last year's light heavyweight national champion. Uh, just opened a gym on, on Long Island in New York, and uh, I think he's going to do real well here. You mentioned a lot of local guys. You mentioned Mike Ashley. And There's some great local talent here at the Night of Champions, and the fans have really turned on to Tom and his routine here. Is this, does this make things rough in the family with your brother being a bodybuilder also? Uh, well, actually it does, and I'll tell you how. Because I, for a while there, I had food in the refrigerator that was safe. My eggs, my chicken, my fish was all safe for a while while he was eating ice cream and red meat. But now it's not safe anymore. I go to the refrigerator to reach for my fish and it's gone. Yeah. He's eating better and eating my food. So it's a little dangerous. <laughs> Still to come on tonight's ninth annual Night of Champions, Mike Ashley, Scott Wilson, and Robbie Robinson. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to the ninth annual Night of Champions. Bob Paris and Hugh Malay. We still have over half the field to be seen here tonight on ESPN. This segment, Mike Ashley, they call him Mr. Natural. He says he's never used a steroid. 5'8", 200 pounds. He looks fantastic, Bob. Well, Mike won the... the
Well, it's not a matter of just live bodybuilding. I have a well-rounded life. You know, I do other things other than just bodybuilding. But what I'm concerned with, when I pursue bodybuilding, if you're going to do it, might as well you do it right or don't do it at all. That means I watch my diet all year round. I'm very consistent with my eating habits. Now, to me, that's not a burden. It just means that when I have to get in shape for a competition, I don't have to make a lot of sacrifices. Like I was weighing 206 when I started my diet, and today I'm about 198. Now, I didn't have to struggle to get in shape for that. When I have a guest appearance, I don't have to starve myself to be in shape for the appearance. So to me, it's not really a matter of it's all bodybuilding, but it's the fact that I'm pursuing the sport, might as well I do it the right way. And that's the bottom line. Up next already in his posing routine, the veteran Scott Wilson out of San Jose, California. We talk about big. He's been big before big was in, Bob. Well, Scott has a tremendously uh, huge physique. He's wide shoulders, uh, small, narrow waist and hips, and really represents what bodybuilding is all about. Here's a guy that isn't as young as some of the competitors, but as you mentioned before, you kind of gain knowledge. You really, you're out, you learn more about your physique. You know how to work certain body parts. Here's a man that doesn't appear to have a visible but certainly the crowd loves it. The crowd-pleasing Scott Wilson leaves the stage always a big crowd favorite no matter where he poses. Up next, another crowd favorite coming on stage. They call him the Black Prince, Robbie Robinson. He dominated bodybuilding circles the late 70s, early 80s. He's now back on top of his sport, saying he looks and feels as good as he ever has. Bob, you have a kind of a special place in your heart for this guy. Well, Robbie was a, was a hero of mine in, when I was beginning the sport of bodybuilding when I was in high school, and uh, he looks tremendous tonight. You mentioned, you know, Robbie's often been called Mr. Arms. They often really denote his arm development in some magazines. Do you sometimes when you work that body part so much that other parts of your body kind of lack behind? Well, he, Ar Robbie has tremendous arm development, but I would say his physique is very balanced, which is the ideal of bodybuilding. To the body parts into a uh, coordinated balance. We had a chance to talk with Robbie Robinson earlier today, and his story about how he got involved in bodybuilding is kind of unique. He actually got involved as being a Vietnam vet. Uh, I, was, I think after I came back from Vietnam, I was really motivated to like train because a lot of the guys that uh, got out there with psychiatrists and they use that as their therapy. Yeah. And so I used bodybuilding as my therapy. It kept me motivated and stimulated to train as hard as possible to win all the shows as much as I possibly could in the sport for so long, do you think that helps your chances of winning or do you think it hurts you? Do you think they're looking for new faces or do you think they kind of um, are partial to the oldies but goodies? No, I think I'm probably one of the old veterans that's like really been in there and been able to stay, you know, and come back and compete and place or win. And uh, I still think they're looking for the old guys to come back because that's really where the real quality muscle is. Uh, the younger guys are like uh, up and coming, or, or they're winning, or they're placing or winning the championships, but really what makes the sport of the older guys. We'll be right back with more of the ninth annual Night of Champions from New York City, including some guys you don't want to miss, Gary Stridham and Tony Pearson. Welcome back to the ninth annual Night of Champions. Jim Malay along with Bob Harris, getting ready for some more competition. We'll take a look at a man that, uh, Gary Stratum, who we talk about Shane DeMora bursting onto the scene as kind of a big little guy, but this guy is big, big, and bigger. Gary's a, a huge athlete, and uh, he's made tremendous strides since his win of the Nationals this last year. Uh, coming in, making his pro debut, um, he's going to do some damage on the pro circuit over the next few years. We had a chance to check in on Gary and his wife, Elise. That's right. In the bodybuilding world, the name Gary Stridham conjures up one word, massive. In this broad-shouldered South African native has set standards in bodybuilding that others could only dream of. I'm going to come in over 250 at the night of the champions. Um, a lot of people think I'm going to be fat, but it's just a matter of fine-tuning my diet that I had for the nationals uh, and coming with my muscles much fuller and obviously being more dominant on stage, being over 250. But this mammoth of a man wasn't always this big. I came to this country uh, six years ago. I was 175 pounds. And uh, I've been up to 285, 290. And I've built this body um, purely on using um, brain power, not only muscles. 
Gary has focused his goals both mentally and physically, making the necessary changes in the process. And it comes in time. You can't rush it. You've got to progressively improve. You can't make drastic changes too fast because you're pushing too hard and you end up injuring yourself. So there's a lot of safety involved. And these changes have helped him put his overall bodybuilding lifestyle together. And I think with me, it's putting all those things together, diet, nutrition, going to the gym, training, dedication, total dedication. But even total dedication was not enough for Gary until he met his wife, Elise, who now plays a large role in his career. She has now become more than a ladies' coordinator. She's now uh, my life coordinator. She, she organizes all the food and nutrition. She handles all my business negotiations. At first, though, Elise had to find out what bodybuilding and Gary were really all about. And I started looking at the magazines with him and learning what he is all about. And it was even more of a challenge to me working with professional athletes to get in with a sport to where they are extremists. But what it's really about when it comes down to contest time is that Gary Stratum has to go it alone. And in this, he is confident. I'm doing everything that I can possibly do to win. I'm so focused on my diet and my training, um, on getting my rest and presentation, tanning. Uh, that I'm only doing my best, and whatever the result, I'm going to be happy with. Here he is, Mr. Big, Gary Stratum, 6'1", 250 pounds. Between competition, he comes in about 270 or thereabouts. Uh, they say there's no such thing as too big in bodybuilding. This man is not only big, but tremendously defined in everything he's a He has nice shape to his physique. Uh, the shoulders are real round, fullness to the chest, uh, great abs. Every couple of years in bodybuilding, it seems to be one man who's really burst on the scene, predicted for greatness. This is the hottest man in bodybuilding right now, Gary Stratton. He loves to pose, and he works so hard at him. And one thing is, you see him shake his quadriceps up right there. Big guys have trouble putting on mass on their legs, but this guy is just huge, huge through the legs. Gary's got tremendous thigh development. And you see him, he loves the crowd, and they love him. 1,500 strong here. He's giving them their money's worth, and then some. Gary Stratton, the national champion last year down in Atlanta. The crowd going crazy is Stratton giving them just a little bit extra before he leaves the stage. Certainly one of the favorites. Speaking of crowd favorites, and certainly one of the favorites are the ladies. They call him Michael Jackson with muscles. Look at a tremendous lat development in the back, a great back. Tony Pearson, who's made his mark in bodybuilding for years, but certainly a man who actually was better when he was a woman by himself. The world mixed pairs of five times champion, Tony Pearson. Yeah, but don't take for granted the tremendous V taper that Tony has. And look at that vacuum, the rib cage pulled up inside, punching down into the abdominals. You see Tony compete so much, he's in so many competitions. Is it, how hard is it to stay as hard as he looks all the time in maybe 10, 12 competitions a year? And how tough is it? Stay as close to condition as possible. In today's modern professional, stay and keep their body fat down as low as possible most of the year round. The days of bulking up and cutting down are pretty much long gone. We talk about his upper body development. Are his legs up to par, or do you feel maybe if there's a weakness for Tony that might? Well, Tony has a very nice thigh development. Uh, he has a, a, a slight weakness through the calf but uh, his, his other body parts tend to balance that out. Theatrically speaking, this guy persona is going to show posing as anybody around. He's a real crowd favorite. Loves the music and turns on the crowd. They love to see guys like this and John Brown come out and they really do it up big.
Arizona that is after this. I think he's just coming back into training at this point. Um, he's massive and muscular, um, but uh, have seen him be a little bit better. Dieting before the competition, possibly he really didn't stress that as much as he should. It's hard to say what mm -hmm. factor was involved. There's so many variables. Mm -hmm. dominated the European circuit three times Mr. World, four times Mr. Europe, a tremendously gifted athlete as far as genetics go. This man seems to have all the body parts, Bob. As, as far as a massive, square, and thick physique, this man is a genetic natural. He's uh, Look at the, the tremendous muscle density that he has. A lot of controversy about working out with lightweight, working out with big weight. Eduardo says, I work out with big weight, 120, 140 pound dumbbells, and he goes, I don't trust anyone to help me with them. I'll take care of it myself. He works out with extremely heavy weight, as you can tell by his thickness. Mm -hmm. Well, his, his thickness is, is very apparent. The, the problem that he's had in the IFBB contest has been coming in quite as muscular as the judging criteria requires. And uh, I think he's going to need to make some adjustments in his dietary habits, uh, coming down to the competition, trimming down the body fat, to come in ripped enough in other words, body fat-free enough to please the uh, his current crop of judges. 12 years ago, age 16, he was a 5'8", 144-pound weakling. He now poses at 5'9", 216. The man knows what to do to put on muscle mass. But right now, as Bob just pointed out, maybe some uh, dietary considerations should be taken into effect. It's all in the refinement. Mm -hmm. And one of select, age 28. And people predict great things for this guy, and certainly genetically, he's been given a lot. Backstage, guys are getting pumped up for that final pose down, as we'll find out who is the champion at the Night of Champions. We'll be right back with the final pose down and much more after this. The favorite portion for the crowd is the pose down. Gary Strider, Mike Ashley, Ron Love, John Natachek and Robbie Robinson. The top five going at it. Bob, and I'll tell you, this is where many competitions are won and lost as Gary Strider trying to show the crowd exactly what he's made of. We saw it earlier, but now he goes against everybody head-to-head. -head. Exactly. The three rounds of judging are over. This 
lends an exciting conclusion to the competition for the crowd and listen to those fans going wild it's uh, the, the 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 bodybuilders are basically trying to get in their best shots now and uh, hitting a lot of most musculars and comparing each other uh, to uh, you know running around the stage trying to get next to who they think has the advantage so you want to get next to the guy who you feel has the best shot of beating you or do you want to look good against somebody who might not be as tough uh, base ideally you should have everyone come to you Robbie Robinson, the Black Prince, back to the top, looking good. Gary Strato, Mike Ashley, they're going at it tooth and toenail. The crowd is going crazy. 1,500 fans, as I said, they're very close to competitors. They could probably reach out and touch Strato and Ashley if they wanted to. The crowd is really into this right now. What a tremendous thing this is for the fans to be so close on stage. Ron Love showing uh, what he's made of, the ab shot, the quad shot. We're showing everything you got right here, and it's really the best thing you can do is what Gary Shrine's doing, just kind of stand there, and you realize the guys are just coming to you and showing you what it's all about. Well, you have to, this is one of those taxing parts of the uh, entire contest. And then the camaraderie, I guess, although you've gone against these guys all day, you want to beat them, but at the end, it's like, we made it, we're a group. Right now, we're going to see who gets it. Robbie Robinson, a very elated Robbie Robinson, will get fifth place tonight. $1,000 for Robbie Robinson. More importantly, I think he's showing people that the Black Prince is back. Coming in fourth place. John Natasek, a local favorite. If you hear the crowd, they're booing very loudly. John, John, a local favorite, and many people thought that he would place higher tonight. He seems to be happy. He gets $2,000 for coming in fourth. Now it's down to the top three. Ashley Love and Stridham. Ron Love, a disappointed Motown man. Ron Love came in second last year, and his pro debut comes in third tonight and uh, seems a little bit more disappointed than the other two competitors. Well, it's so difficult. I mean, the thing that separates the, the top people is, is so thin. My now the final is... countdown. Gary Stridham is the champion at the Night of Champions as Michael Ashley gets announced that he is indeed second place. Gary Stridham gives that exuberant fist in the air. He is a happy guy. One good reason for that, of course, despite the medal and the plaque, 10 grand in his hand. It's a big payoff night for, for Gary. And it's important that he's setting, a, setting the pace so much, Bob, that he's winning. He's not coming in second or third. He's winning these events. He's in the Nationals and now the United Champions. Exactly. Gary's a, a tremendous champion. Uh, he should be real proud of, his, of the improvement that he's making in his physique. Everyone on stage should be proud of Gary's physique. And we are giving the first place Ribbon for Gary. He's looking for the check, I'm sure, but uh, that'll come as well. Gary Stridham, the champion at the Night of Champions in New York City. The plaque, the check, and the medal. And we'll be back with more. We'll wrap it all up after this. A tremendous night of competition at the Night of Champions. Bob, and I'll tell you, when you see Gary Stridham giving you that jubilant fist in the air, you realize the emotional turmoil these guys just go through, not only tonight and yesterday, but three to four, five weeks going up into the competition. Oh, it's a tremendous feeling uh, to, to be standing there on stage and winning, and it's a great competition to have won. Our cameras caught up with the winner, Gary Stridham, and his lovely wife, Elise, backstage. Okay, when I talked to you this afternoon, you told me you were going to win it, and you did it. How do you feel? Well, that's not correct. I didn't say I was going to win it. I said I was going to make a good showing, and... Uh, I think I made a good showing for my pro debut and that's very important to make a change from show to show and I felt like I made a lot of improvement and uh, the victory of course is sweet and there's an old saying they say money that's won is much sweeter than money that's earned so that money is sweet but it's just a really you got to love the sport you got to understand the sport and for me it's just a way of living for myself and my wife we do everything together and I love the sport of bodybuilding, and I just love the people that I meet, and I'm real high in life, that's all. Where do you go from here? Well, right now I go back, I collect my thoughts, and um, 
kind of just draw from the winnings and the victory and and get the publicity that I need to get and go on to the next one, which is the Olympia. And I'm going to train for that one. And, you know, that's what you're going to do. Take one step at a time. That's very important. You don't think too far ahead in the sport. It's uh, something that comes very progressive. And it's, it's like an investment. Uh, you make an investment in your body every time you push a weight. And to me, it just takes time and patience. And that's why I think I've been successful because of that. Okay, that's where you're going in a few months. Where are you going to go eat tonight? <laughs> well, uh, anyway, uh, matter of fact, I'm not going to go too crazy because um, we, we died so long. I've been dieting for nine months and to diet and then suddenly go crazy and, and eat and it really doesn't make you feel all that well. So I'll eat a medium square meal though. No, none of these peeled potatoes and stuff like that, yeah. egg whites, just a regular meal. So basically just a restaurant. Well, congratulations and good luck to you at the Olympia. Thanks, Thank Gary. Thank you very much. God bless you.